I feel like I've become a significantly more, like, more boring person since the last time we recorded a White Claw Wasted. I've become much more stable emotionally. I've much less stable. Is that true? I don't know, maybe. I feel like you have always <laughs> been the same amount of stable. <laughs> Which is, like, how much? <laughs> Not that much. <laughs> Other updates since we were here last. It's the same apartment, but a different angle. And I didn't get married. Oh, Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> oh wow. I, that's that's not an indictment. Well, anyway. <laughs> I just gotta have more white claw. I have a few things that I've written down to talk about today. It's not very extensive. <laughs> the first thing to talk about. <laughs> it's a ripple-edged toilet paper. Oh, should I go get it? <laughs> Did we actually buy it for some reason? I thought you just showed me a picture of ripple-edged no, toilet wait, paper. <laughs> really wonderful design. No, I love it. It's like it does rip very easily. Um, I'm pleased with it. I will purchase it again. I feel like the only thing that I could improve upon it is if the if the rippled edges were gold embossed. <gasps> I hate this bra. I feel like you can tell you're wearing a bra. I know, I really like I really don't like it also. Like I feel like I have to like sit up very straight or otherwise I get this like Oh I feel like I need to sit up really straight because otherwise I have a hunchback. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> This is not even a full white claw in. Well I went to a friend's giving on Sunday and not only did I drop my fork three times, but I also <laughs> forgot that I had my plate in my lap, stood up, and it crashed to the floor. Luckily, no shattering occurred. I haven't spilled anything much recently. You know, I've spilled a lot of stuff. <laughs> Have you? Yeah. <laughs> well, stuff we've spilled. This is like, this is a gripping. <laughs> this is gripping. Like, what else? Yeah. <laughs> well, I've spilled uh, a full glass of water all over my um, bookshelf. And during that time, I'm going to have to bleep this out, but there's a <laughs> With a hole in it. <laughs> and it. Terrible. And I also, this is like in the middle of the night as well, so I had to turn on the light and remove all of the books from my bookshelf because I was like, I don't want my books to get moldy again. Like I've had a spill before and it did cause molding on my books. And then since then even, that was a few weeks ago. And since then, I um forget what I was going to say. Oh, since then I spilled a full glass of water off of the side of my desk. Damn. I know. I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> There's not a lot to say. <laughs> Terrible. I guess you could extend your condolences. I do but... extend my condolences. I'm really sorry about that. I mean, I thought I was going to spill a beer yesterday, but I didn't. Well, that's great. The next thing I have to talk about is my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Last night I had a dream about swallowing. It was one of those dreams where you're like kind of half awake, half asleep, so you like get up and start to react to your dreams, but it's really just hallucination. Mm -hmm. You've had a lot of those, like mm -hmm. you, and maybe maybe hers actually weren't dreams. I feel like yours might have been like haunting. Oh yeah, they definitely were. But I have this thing that actually happens like kind of frequently where I'll wake up thinking I swallowed some inanimate object <laughs> and then I'll be like trying to like pull it out of my throat so last night, my uh, the thing that I was trying to pull out of my uh, throat was a fork. But like, this is not the first time this has happened. <laughs> and I know another time I messaged mom, I have this feeling that I swallowed several combs. <laughs> <laughs> and I woke up the next morning to a text from, from mom and she was like, <laughs> that that's unfortunate. And I was like, I have no, like, recollection of having sent that message. You must have been asleep. But I did know exactly what feeling I was talking about. Yeah. Because I have this Ooh, happen. It's terrible. And I Googled it, and other people have the same thing. They're like, oh, yeah, for me, it's batteries. <laughs> like, <laughs> where does that come from? <laughs> where does it come from? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Huh, interesting, interesting. I, yeah, I don't think I've had, like, that type of dream. Yeah, so what dream am I talking about? Like, I can't even remember all of them. I mean, I guess I got them in 489, this cursed apartment. 
Not this cursed Not apartment. This one, this a different cursed, cursed apartment. apartment. This I wouldn't also. say this is cursed. Moderately. Actually, moderately cursed at least. I don't think it is. I feel like what is happening is actually I just have telekinetic powers, and I'm like Carrie. And so anytime I'm going through a tough time, everything malfunctions. And you get roaches. Well, no, I think you attracted the roaches. No, I didn't. I wasn't here. I, okay, but you were the one who was, like, worried about it for a really long time after we moved here, and you're the one who manifested the roaches. I'm pretty sure. A worry is a wish for something you don't want to happen. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean... Lots. I need to, like, sit up straight. Yeah. Have we talked about your dreams? I don't I don't know. I mean, I feel like even I can't, like, completely remember them. I know there was the one where there was, like, a chair floating, like, floating in midair, and I looked over at it, and then I, like, kind of woke up, and it wasn't there. That was the whole content of the dream. The dream. <laughs> the dream. <laughs> and then, um, there was one with, like, neon roaches climbing on the walls. I mean, that was self-explanatory. We all know why I had that dream. Because there were. Yeah, of course. I'm just checking myself out. I don't know, like, it almost feels like maybe I should be on the other side. Should we know. trade places just so, like, if this is my good side, then we can both... Well, we can trade back, it's just I want to make sure that for a little while we get my good side. But also this might be my bad side, it's really hard to say. You could go take it off. I, I don't know. think you'd be able to see your nipples <laughs> through the fabric. I might take it off, I feel like it's making... Why did you wear that bra? sense of obligation I guess yeah that is so much better I feel like it's way less obvious now yeah I feel like I look way less fat the other dream I wanted to talk about or really multiple dreams was I've been having a lot of dreams about Gerard Way <laughs> well actually by a lot I mean two but I've never yeah. had it is I've never had dreams about any famous person before and the first one his name was Gerard No. N-O-H, which I think is a very sinister and ominous name. Mm-hmm, it is. <laughs> Gerard, no. And he had been, he had died in a car accident in California. So I feel like there's, it's conceivable that there's like another universe where his name is Gerard, no, and he did die. Uh-huh. Probably in the middle, probably exactly when I had that dream. That's awful. That's so I know. bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess I could tell... Oh, you had another one then about Jared White. Well, yeah, he just... I feel like that one's not that interesting. He was just sitting on, like, the kind of futon that people sit on in college, you know? It was, like, one of those fake leather futons that boys would have in their rooms. <laughs> I know exactly what He was you mean. sitting on one of those futons and just, like, talking about aging. Nice. And mortality. Oh, yeah, this is perfect. Nice segue. This is wow, a good segue. I'm very impressed. It's almost like you planned it. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Still, isn't it? It's great. Okay. So that brings us to the main topic mm-hmm. of this White Claw Wasted, which is aging. Because I have a friend that just recently turned 24. Mm-hmm. I've been 25 for a while now, but (laughs) 24 was the age when I really started to have, like, a crisis about, like, getting older and feeling old, and I felt like, oh, I really need to, like, be serious, and, like, I need to, like, wear more adult clothes, and I have to, like, have my hair be less messy, and I need to, like, I don't know, basically business casual my life. I mean, I was pretty unsuccessful, to be honest, but there was also, like, a part of me that was rebelling against that, and I also was simultaneously trying to be, like, 12. <laughs> no, maybe not 12, but, like, 16. 24 is probably the oldest I've been. Yeah. Like, I don't think I've been older than 24. Well, I mean, you know, older than I felt at 24. Yeah, you feel the oldest at 24. <laughs> I would say at 21, that's the last birthday that's truly fun. Mm -hmm. Or maybe 22. Mm -hmm. 22 was pretty fun. Yeah, it was okay. Yeah, so like 22, my 22nd birthday was pretty lackluster, but my 22nd year was pretty good. Um, I think I felt 22 at Mm -hmm. 22. Like, I think I felt like what you're supposed to feel like at 22, 23, likewise. I liked it. It was good. Yeah. Um, Also, I think felt 23, and then I turned 24, and yeah, like, that was the oldest age I've been, you know, like, mm-hmm. because it was such a serious time. Yeah, you start wearing 
business suits. You start wearing your hair in a bun, and you're like, I'm, <laughs> you introduce yourself at parties as Hillary Clinton. <laughs> well, it is serious, I think, because, like, you're, like, basically two years out of college, and you're like, oh, I should be doing something. And in my case, I wasn't doing anything. Yeah, I guess it's like, yeah, like, what's the context of your life? when you Mm -hmm. turn 24 because I mean I think like well if you've been in a job for like two years like well I mean you're done for like yeah that's it for you um oh yeah and like if you're not yet then you feel the real pressure to like do something important well my big thing was I was like oh my god it's like 16 years to 40 huh right and like it felt like a lot of or it felt like a little time, like not a lot of years. And I was like, oh, well, like time is really taking to do anything like mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah. I mean, I still feel that way all the time. Um, but, yeah. I mean, but, yeah. But yeah, no, it's, it's a serious time. Cause I guess like on my 24th birthday, I remember waking up to a text from the guy I'd been dating for like six months at the time Mm -hmm. and I mean to like give an indication of how like the quality of that relationship I was really surprised he'd even known it was my birthday (laughs) (laughs) so but like I was so thrilled um but also then like I didn't have any friends and so I basically just like went to a cafe by myself Mm. and like had a pastry and then knowing me I probably went and like drank a bottle of wine by myself yeah. In my apartment alone. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. That's probably what I did. That's mainly what I did in San Francisco. I mean, that's... It's pretty bleak. Yeah, I mean, I guess, like, that's the context of, like, 24. For you. Yeah. And so then I, like, felt like I had to, like, get my life together. Yeah. And I didn't. You kind of did. <laughs> that was your 24th birthday. Uh-huh. I just finished a coding boot camp, so I had, like, a coding challenge to do for, like, to get a job, and that's how I spent, like, the first few hours of 24, and then mom and dad were in town. You were obviously at work. They, like, took me to Coney Island, I'm pretty sure, and, like, during this time... Mm -hmm. I was, like, super malnourished during the entirety of boot camp, coding boot camp, not, like, military boot camp, (laughs) during the entirety of coding boot camp, because I was just, like, so stressed out. I didn't feel like eating, so I would eat, like, one meal a day, basically. I was like, why do I feel like I'm falling apart physically? But obviously, looking back, I can see I was super malnourished. I remember just sitting in the back seat of mom and dad's car as they drove to Coney Island just feeling like oh my god like I'm decomposing <laughs> and it makes sense that I'm decomposing because I'm 24 I'm ancient <laughs> wow oh by the way I just started a new uh flavor it's blackberry but yeah okay so like apart from 24 then 25 like fine I think you feel fine Fine. again at 25. Yeah, I felt fine. I was Mm -hmm. used to being 24. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're like, okay, we're we're here. Mm -hmm. It's fine. 26, also I think fine. Yeah, I feel like 26 is less good than 25. You're kind of creeping into late 20s territory, and you're like, ooh, and like this feels a little bit unsteady. Also, I feel like objectively 26 is a worse number than 25. Because I don't really like even numbers that much. Oh, see, I prefer even numbers. No, I don't really like even numbers at all. Sick. (laughs) Well, maybe. But, um, knock on wood, I'm not sick. So 26, I don't know how high we want to go. Because, like, you know. Well, I mean, I can only save so many. Yeah, I know, you know. It's like, how much, I guess it's really how much do I want to age myself. And I'm like, "Mm, yeah. I I mean, a bit is fine. I mean, I don't know, I don't know, like... I want to go all the way up. I mean, I can speak to, okay, so then I'll speak to 27. And I think 27 is better than 26. Yeah, I like 27 actually a lot. I feel like 27 is the age that you like start to get it together. Yeah, I mean, I think though at 27, I probably... And you feel young. It also, it has the vibe of a young age because it's an odd number. Exactly. Like, I feel like I felt more like 18 at 27 because I guess I felt like okay life is really just starting now Mm -hmm. like now it's starting which was like a great thing to happen and then there was 28 which was like um 
fine at first, and like, and then for me, things deteriorated rapidly. But I don't know if that's everyone's twenty eight experience. And I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. You you have yet to see. Hopefully, it'll be a, an upward trajectory. I really feel like <laughs> I feel like I am on an upward trajectory. Yeah, yeah. Mine was like a downward. Well, I feel spiral. like that's honestly. I feel like you started your Saturn return when you were twenty eight. Did I? Oh, I think shit. so. And so every basically, that's like all of your karma. Every choice that you made came to its fruition. So. I must have been terrible. No, no, not in a past <laughs> life. It's just like your karma in this life. No, like, it must every have been choice... terrible in this life. What did I do? No, it's just like it makes sense based on the choices you had made thus far. <laughs> I think. I don't know. <laughs> so... I still need to read a book about astrology. So this is just like stuff that I've heard on TikTok. You're ruled by Saturn big time. Am I really? Mm-hmm. You know so much more about me. I mean, I also feel like I need to like read. Before well, Saturn is astrology. the ruler of Aquarius and Capricorn. That Those do appear in, yeah. in my chart quite and a I'm, bit, actually. Like, yeah, they really do. And do you know what Saturn is? What? <laughs> Guess what, what the planet represents. I don't know. What does it represent? <laughs> It represents responsibility and seriousness. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> and I'm I'm big time ruled by Mars because uh-huh. Mars rules both Scorpio and Aries and I'm an Aries rising and I'm a Scorpio sun. And what Mars is I mean Mars is like the god of war, right? Yeah, like aggression and sex. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you definitely got the better one. Like, <laughs> Did I? Damn it, I don't know. Well, we get responsibility. You hate that you got responsibility. Yeah. Why? I don't want to be responsible. <sighs> but you kind of are in some ways. I mean, I guess you're actually not. You just have, like, the vibe of being responsible. That's what we keep saying. Like, mm-hmm. what I appear to be is definitely not what I am. See, I would rather be responsible than have the vibe of being responsible. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know where that comes from. Like, I don't know why people look at me and say, like, oh, that's a responsible person. I like, feel like it's because you're wearing a sweater. What's wrong with wearing a sweater? <laughs> I didn't say there's something wrong with it. I just, I'm saying there's something responsible I feel about like it. Because you're of, planning ahead. Lots of irresponsible people wear sweaters. No, you're planning ahead for the cold weather. You know, lots of irresponsible people wear sweaters. Yes. Like, like who? I don't know. Lots of them. Well, name one irresponsible person. I'm not planning ahead for the cold weather. It is mm. cold. I know, but you're planning ahead for when you go outside. I'm inside. No, my room is freezing. The heater doesn't work. Yeah, I guess. I just feel like you are, like, responsible. You also, like, are married, which is, like, a very responsible seeming thing to do it's not necessarily responsible if you had like a a ring made out of candy I'm sure people would think you were irresponsible but like you don't so what about people who get married in like Vegas I'm that's what I'm saying someone with a ring made out of candy they don't all have rings made out of candy well I feel like I don't know I guess it depends on how they present because I feel like you present very responsibly like you look I don't know (laughs) you just look like responsible You're wearing a sweater. (laughs) That's like the main thing that keeps coming up. But there is, I just feel like there is something responsible about your vibe. Because you also are very like restrained. Like you're not just going to impulsively say something and like put your foot in your mouth. Yeah, not usually. Sometimes. But I feel like I, I say impulsive things that maybe are bad. Like here's one that I've been thinking about for a while. Um, I recently went through a breakup and basically I went to this friend's giving and my friend's sister, she said that she would beat him up for me. And I was like, oh yeah, you look like you could eat him for breakfast. So just like, (laughs) like that's something that like they say in cartoons, but I feel like it really came (laughs) off as being like, you're fat. And then it was even worse because I tried to backtrack and I was like, because you look so strong. (laughs) But like, she does, she's not fat and she does look strong. Like she does. And like, yeah, I just feel like that's something you would never say. I mean, maybe, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I think you forget though how like I can get very nervous in certain social situations and say shit that sounds like really stupid. (laughs) 
I can't think of any examples right now. I wish I had one as good as that, but like, oof. Hmm. Well, um, I wish you did too. Mm -hmm. I will be keeping track of them. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it on a list so you can bring it to the next point. A very responsible. Yeah. A very responsible list. That is responsible. I mean, the thing is, the ironic thing about all this is I'm the one who made the list for this video. Not that it was a very extensive list, but... Yeah, I planned absolutely nothing. I think my contribution to this like, video talk was the rippled toilet paper. And the um, set. And yeah, and I did the set. And I got these glasses. I mean, that wasn't really intentional. That just happened. Yeah. I, I just went to the wine store and they were like, do you want some free glasses? And I was like, Yes. Yeah. And then, but then I, you know what, maybe I am, because then I was restrained and I only took two when I should have just taken like all of them. <laughs> when you said you were restrained, I thought you meant like, <laughs> they, physically, they physically restrained you. Yeah, I tried to take all the glasses. Um, <laughs> they needed to stop me. They tied me down. <laughs> I was carted home in a straight jacket. Yeah, who's responsible now? I love them. Like, I mean, they don't hold a lot, but... They hold very little. I guess they would be, like, a good shot glass. Like, a really healthy size shot. Yeah, like, and you get to keep pouring, so... You get that satisfaction. I don't get a lot of satisfaction from Neither pouring. Do I. I, didn't, I, like, I don't know why I said that. I thought you would have gotten satisfaction from pouring. No, I mean, I feel a deep sense of shame every time I pour myself a drink. Really? No. Hmm. You keep saying stuff, and then you're like, I actually don't mean that. I don't know what I, I don't know what I mean. I don't know who I am anymore. Did you ever? No. Know who you are? No, though I did realize today, I think that maybe I've always had what I need to be, who I need to be. What? Isn't that like the whole point, point of the hero's journey? I don't know. I feel like it's the point of the artist's way. Oh, really? I don't know. It's like, who is your inner child that is you and that's who you need to be. Mm -hmm. And so I've done two weeks morning pages and I feel like, yeah, I kind of know who I need to be now, I think. And I think I know that that was always me. Well, who do you need to be? I don't, I mean, that's like, that's the hard part. Well, I thought you said you knew who no, you I mean, to be. Yeah, I do know. I, I guess I need to like be not so restrained. I feel like you are a very restrained child, though. I don't know. Less so, though. I took a lot more chances. Your inner child definitely was a little restrained. I did a lot more things as a child, though. Yeah, you I did. took many more <clears throat> risks. And it was only, like, when I became, like, a teenager that I became a good student. That was my biggest mistake. Maybe. Yeah, I was actually, like, a pretty bad student as a child. I don't know if you were. I was. I was, like, a, an, a B student. I, if you were a B student, I wonder what I got. Yeah, I don't know. I just have, like, a distinct impression that, like, definitely in, like, third and fourth grade and stuff, I was, like, a B student. Yeah, I feel like I got some A's, some B's, mm -hmm. probably. I think that's the same. Like, I think it was some A's, some B's. No, but you were always good at standardized testing. I don't think I did well at all on the standardized tests. Maybe. I don't know. I resented them. I can't remember how I did. Well, my question is, how did you get asked into task? I don't know. Like, I don't think I was that great. Well, you must have been better than me. I don't know. I think, like, the only thing I did that I, like, remember that <laughs> was exceptional about me, like, in second grade, which was the year I got asked into task, which is, like, the gifted and talented program. I'm a former gifted kid. I'm a former gifted kid. It's, yeah. <laughs> was that I wrote this, like... We had to like oh, we all had to write a, a book like a story book. Um, yeah, and I wrote mine was like a protest book about the banning of Tamagotchis, and how I objected wow. to it. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I remember that book, and I colored all of their faces black. <laughs> Every page. I don't know why I did this. I took a black marker to every character's face. It's like straight out of the ring. It really is. Why did I do that? I don't, have you seen the ring yet? No. That no, I fun. hadn't. I was like really little. I can't remember when the ring came out. Yeah, well, when you were in second grade, like how old were you? I was probably like two or three. Oh, you, you, you colored all the characters black in my Tamagotchi book? Yeah. <laughs> you did all 
the illustrations, right? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I feel like I was telling a story to myself as I was co- coloring all of their faces <laughs> over in black. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. I feel like there was some kind of a disease outbreak and it like turned people's faces just like they didn't have a face anymore. It was just like a black hole. Oh, that's dark. <laughs> yeah. I had like a lot of dark stories that I concocted when I was really like as young as two years old. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I know. It really does. Wow. Okay. Well, this has been very revealing. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't remember that I colored all of their faces black. I had no idea, actually. Really? I don't. I, I don't feel know. like you might have gotten mad at me about it. I don't it. even know. I don't. I mean, I don't think I cared that much about that book. Well, maybe mom was ma- mad at me. Yeah, like it was my uh, my protest novel, <gasps> and you know. It, so they banned Tamagotchis. They did. That's crazy, because then they'll die during the school day. See, that I think that was my very point. I needed to look after it, and I couldn't if it was at home, mm-hmm. because mom was definitely not going to watch it. Like, even, I even think I, like, asked mom to, like, watch my Tamagotchi while I was at school, which I think she was like, sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I'd come home, I'm sure it was dead. Yeah, it's dead, surrounded by piles of poop. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> No, that used to happen, like, when I would go to sleep. It's like I would, you would have to, like, set an alarm in the night to <laughs> feed and clean up after your Tamagotchi. It was, like, a lot of responsibility. It was. Nintendogs was the game for me. Mm-hmm. Because they, like, didn't poop that much. Mm-hmm. I never played that, so. When I got Nintendogs, I accidentally got a boy dog that looked like Kiki, our dog, at the time. I didn't know what to do. Because I could either get rid of it mm-hmm. and, like, adopt a female dog. Mm-hmm. I could get another dog, a female dog, also name it Kiki and keep both Kikis. Mm-hmm. Or just pretend that it was a girl dog, so I just pretended. Mm-hmm. But, like, it would lift its leg to pee. So every time I would be reminded of my mistake. Yeah, so, like, yeah, the realism of the game wasn't quite there for I, you. Right, well... I mean, you needed it to be... Um, I mean, it was maybe a little too realistic. Too realistic. You needed... You ne- I mean, you needed it to kind of do nothing when it peed. And yeah. You're just aware of it. There's, like, a puddle. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, you know, something has happened, but we don't know where, what hole it came out of. Like, we just don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Okay, so where were we? We've covered Tamagotchis, Nintendogs, Gifted and Talented. We're really going off script yeah, we are. I mean, not that there really was a script, but, you know, did you have other topics on your list? That yeah, we, that was That was it? Right. That was all we had? Okay. I could say more about ages, but I feel like that would be dangerous. Well, I feel like we didn't even talk about the ages. I know, but well, what else do we have to say about ages? Like, I don't know, because I feel like it's hard to rehash the conversation because we've already had it. We could start having it again. No, but I mean, like, we've had this conversation between the two of us enough times that it's like... It doesn't feel that fun to have the conversation. It's like it feels almost rehearsed. Right. We have to, yeah, I think we do have to go off script, don't we? Yeah, I think that's maybe not how people do podcasts. But I feel like, you know what, in the Frenemies podcast, pretty much the only podcast I've ever watched, Mm -hmm. um, I feel like there really wasn't a script. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like typical podcasting structure is dumb anyway. I mean, this is like going (coughs) to get me a lot of enemies, probably, (laughs) but. Um, really? I feel like people who listen to a lot of podcasts are boring. Hmm. Because I feel like they think that they're learning stuff all the time. Like, they're the types of people who are like, oh, I really love learning in, like, a really, like, pretentious way. I like to learn. Yeah, I do too, but I don't talk about how I like to learn. Like, I just learn. Uh-huh. And, like... I feel like there are a lot of people who listen to podcasts, but, like, but they probably don't talk about it. Mm-hmm. There are bad apples in an, in every bunch. It's true. It's true. And I mean, I suppose like it's hard to generalize like podcast <sighs> listeners because like they are. Men. There are quite a few. Yeah, there are there are so many. I think, mm-hmm. and I don't know why I've never gotten into the the podcast format. I can get into it, but it's like I feel like oftentimes when I listen to a podcast, it's because there's no music I want to listen to, and usually if there's no music I want to listen to, I'm in just like a terrible state emotionally. I and so agree I agree with that. I associate podcasts with that level of turmoil. Yeah, I guess that's true, and I suppose like the only thing there and the only difference is that when I like yeah like. 
I don't want to necessarily listen to music in a terrible emotional state sometimes. Mm -hmm. But then it's like instead of putting on a podcast, like I just ruminate in my feelings. So I'll just like go on a walk and brood and Mm -hmm. that's it. (laughs) I'll just think about I'm so unhappy, blah, blah, blah. Um, Without music, without any noise. Yeah. Only the noise from the outside world to keep me company. And that's like, it's when I know things are bad. Hi. Look. Yeah, anyway, but um, I didn't mean to be, like, slanderous of podcasts. I know we're kind of doing one right now. I would listen to this podcast. Well, I don't really listen to podcasts, so I don't really care if you're slanderous about them. It's just, like, you know, I just don't know if I would say that about podcast listeners. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I listen to the Brittany Simon podcast. Oh, that's true, you do. But I do like to learn, so... (laughs) Maybe I'm one of the bad apples. (laughs) I also like to learn. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with learning. You're responsible and... Oh, sorry. You're irresponsible and you like to learn. I hate learning. I don't know if you can have it both ways. (laughs) No, I know. I'm (laughs) kidding anyway. Wow, I do just like keep saying things I don't mean. I do that all the time. (laughs) I I don't know. Maybe you're using it as a defense mechanism against the camera. It's not to be trusted. It's pretty intimidating. Yeah. Scary to look at. It's scary to look at. Oh, it's dying. No. <laughs> Have we said enough bullshit? I feel like you always like say things are bullshit. Have we said enough bullshit? No, we said. Well, I at least said gold. You did, of course, you did. Yeah. I just assume what I'm saying is bullshit. Yeah, I feel like you have serious self-esteem issues. Yeah. Well. Are you going to address them? No. Why not? <laughs> Haven't needed to yet. Well, I, I disapprove. <laughs> I think it's fine. Why you do it? Because you think it's, like, funny? Mm-mm. I mean, they're real. They What's are, real? They're real. Self-esteem issues, they're real. I don't get why you would you would choose to keep having them. <sighs> if you strange. know it's a problem and it, like, makes your life actively worse, why would you choose to keep them? It's not a problem. Okay, but your life could be a lot better if you didn't have them. Would it be different? What? My life, would it be different? If you didn't have self-esteem issues? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, I feel like my life would be the same. I don't think so. Confidence is key. Well, we'll see. Maybe by the next White Claw Wasted, I'll have self-esteem. Well, hopefully we'll have one sooner than... Sooner rather than later. Yeah. Like, not, like, three years from now. Yeah. Yeah, that's a long time. God. I don't even want to think about what age I'll be then. I'll be 25. How long does it last after this? Do we need a good outro? Whatever the outro is, the outro is. We'll just wait for it to... The outro is what it is. Yeah. We'll just wait for it to go. Sit and wait. It's like we're on the Titanic. I'm in a lifeboat.